Hey guys, this video is brought to you by Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is an in-person coding and design bootcamp that offers housing at no extra cost for immersive students. And they even have career services that can help you with job placement after you graduated. Dev Mountain loves hearing from my subscribers, so be sure to click on the link in the description tab below if you or somebody you know is ready to dive into coding and design. All right, guys, so first and foremost, Python is awesome because it's cross-platform and it's free. So if you're on Linux, Mac, or Windows, you can download Python and actually start writing Python programs. And the fact that it's free is also pretty cool because we used to actually have languages that were built and, um, you know, they're proprietary. So there were companies that were actually responsible for certain languages. Nowadays, like most languages are open source. Also, Python now works hand in hand with Visual Studio Code, which is a pretty popular text editor. So when it comes to actually writing your code, this works hand in hand. And again, this is cross platform and it's free. There's a Python plugin so you can actually get like um, like real time Python debugging capabilities and uh, just a lot of like really helpful syntax highlighting and stuff like that. All right, so another reason why you want to learn Python is that it actually enforces proper um, syntax. So as you're writing your code, it makes sure that you you indent your code. Uh, it makes sure that you have like colons where you need to have colons and things like that. Uh, so as I mentioned before with Visual Studio Code, if you just install the Python extension, it gives you a lot of debugging support right out of the box. And it's this one from Microsoft, like 23 million downloads almost. Here's an example of it in action. Like once you have it installed, you just go ahead and set up your configuration. So you go to run and then add configuration. And then here we're just going to select a Python file. This will create the launch.json file. So this is going to say what, you know, whatever file you're in is what it's going to be launching. So here I can go ahead and just say print testing. I know it's small. I'll make it bigger. But then pressing F5 now. After you set that configuration, it's going to go ahead and execute the Python program. It's going to be slow the first time it compiles, but there's the output right there. So again, Python's a very uh, beginner-friendly language. It enforces white space. It enforces proper uh, variable naming and other things like that. Um, our variable names, you know, like just like other programming languages, can't start with a number. So my variable is valid. This is a string. Um, the, the great thing about like this, uh, visual studio code extension is again, you get this debugging support. So if I just put a breakpoint on, uh, just to the left of the line number, it's going to put this little red dot. And if I press F5, it's going to actually stop on that line. So I can inspect like my variables in real time and, uh, and see how they change and stuff as the program is executing line by line. Without those capabilities, you really can't do any sort of real, real development. So when you look at it, like really complicated projects out there and you're like, how did they build that code and all that stuff? It's always about having a build environment with the ability to debug and things like that. Otherwise, you're just kind of, you know, for lack of a better term, like pissing in the wind, so to speak. All right. So another big reason why Python is also awesome is because it has a web framework that is uh, it's been in existence for a long time, really with when the MVC craze started which stands for Model View Controller. It's a web design architecture that we've been using for a long time. Uh, really, Ruby on Rails took off with that, and then Django soon followed, and then C Sharp, and then VC.net, and then Java. And then Node and all that other stuff. But the bottom line is we separate our, our stuff out in, in models, uh, views, con uh, controllers. So views being templates, models being databases, and uh, controllers being your back-end logic. But uh, there's a lot of code that goes into actually maintaining a website, and Django is a full-stack framework. It's responsible for websites like Instagram and Pinterest originally, uh, a few other websites as well. But it's all Python code, and it's, uh, it's pretty easy to get started with. So Python has a package manager tool. There's pip environment, which is still pretty new, but I'm just going to use pip because I'm, I'm still used to that. Uh, pip is the old school one. Pip environment is probably what you should be using these days, but whatever. You can just go ahead and install it. So if anybody's done any sort of node development, it's uh, very similar. It's just a package manager tool, and it installs it. Um, so the way node modules works for the, the node developers out there is like Python has um, virtual environments that they that they posit, like they uh, partition the the package dependencies needed for the project. All right, and now that since Django's installed, we can use the Django admin 
and we can say start project. I know it's kind of uh, big lettering here, but uh, then give it whatever name we want. So I'll call it my project. I'm going to zoom this out a bit. All right, so that's going to spin up your Django project. And then um, we're just going to go ahead and CD into that folder. So say my project. And then uh, manage.py and then uh, run server. So that gives you a whole lot of Python code right out of the bat, uh, or right off the right, right out of the box, and it's going to save you a lot of time. So this has already got CSS working, built-in development server. It's got even a back-end administration system. It works really well with relational databases. So if you're going to use like MySQL or Postgres, but the point is that Python's awesome because it's easy to get started with it with web development, and you can actually do real professional-grade web development. Obviously, if Instagram and Pinterest were using it. So another cool thing is that even though Python's not really known for game development, you always hear about Unity and Unreal Engine and all that stuff, but if you wanted to go back to like old school Pong days and stuff like that, you could do that in Python pretty easily. For instance, there's this Pygame library. I think this used to be included in the Python installations, but it probably isn't anymore. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but either way, it's, been, it's, been, it's a library that goes back for a long way. So if it's not installed, you just pip install Pygame, just like with Django. And to get started with that, it's really easy. So here's a game example. Uh, we'll just call this uh, snake.py. And here's some code from a uh, university, computer science university here. So we're just going to copy this, and it's going to be a little snake that you can move around. But just in uh, 120 lines of Python code here, uh, less than that actually, press F5 to run it. And we actually are going to get a graphical user interface, also keyboard inputs, and... and um, you know, obviously the, the, the graphics there are pretty terrible, but like if you were going to do a Pong type of game or something, you want to go old school, it's a pretty good way to start with game development and really learn some of the core of it and then move on to the bigger the game frameworks out there. And here is a more difficult example, which is a maze. So it's quite a bit more code here, but if we see something like this in action, this really reminds me of the old school Atari days. All right, here we go. All right, so we're the white dot. And we got some collision detection going on there. Go into a new room. Get past this maze. I mean, obviously, it's, it's uh, a bit removed from what you can do in, like, Unity or Unreal Engine, but it's a good place to start. All right, guys, so another reason why Python is awesome is uh, maybe you guys want to get into some data science. You want to start calculating some black hole theories and stuff like that. Here's this first image of a black hole. Uh, they use SciPy with that, and this is NumPy. And you could tap into all of these different libraries and such to tap into machine learning. Some of the latest capabilities include being able to tap into your graphical uh, processing unit, which has much faster processing capabilities when it comes to graphics uh, and processing numbers. So we use that in machine learning. And there's tools like this tool from NVIDIA here. And this allows me on my Windows machine to tap into that, that graphics processor. So with tools like Anaconda, I could just tap into this, and this actually installs everything that I need in order to tap into some of the latest in machine learning. So everything from like SciPy, like I mentioned, NumPy, um, also things like PyTorch. PyTorch is probably one of the easiest ways to tap into the latest in machine learning using Python. It really holds your hand on a lot of different stuff, and uh, I'll give you an example of that. So because PyTorch needs a lot of stuff in order to get started with, that's why you want to install Anaconda. And then what you do is you just get this Anaconda prompt that has everything you need. And then by executing that, you're going to have pretty much all the stuff that Anaconda installed for you, which is like NumPy, SciPy, all that stuff. But you still then have to install PyTorch. And there's an example of that. Um, so you just simply install, uh, where did I do that? It's, yeah, right here. Uh, conda install pytorch hyphen c pytorch and then just ask you if you want to install it you install it this is going to install everything you need to, in order to uh, start working on it all right guys so those are really the main reasons why you want to learn python it's uh, it's widely taught like i said because of the syntax it's an older language been around for a long time which means that there's a lot of code that's already written for you it does other things really well too the original google search engine was created in python Scrappy is a project if you wanted to create your own type of Google bot to collect data. Um, as far as mobile development, I would say Python, that's probably its weakest link. Mobile development, although you can use something like Kiwi, it just really, 
it's really like uh it's just not there compared to other tools that are already out there that promise for you to be able to uh, write once and deploy to android ios and all that other stuff but that's going to wrap it up for this video if you guys are interested in learning the code and you want to learn with me i recommend you check out my website codehawk.com and i get it there's all kinds of free resources out there there's free books courses there's paid stuff uh, the point is, uh, is if you guys want to learn with me, then uh, I recommend these courses. These are all things that I've done this year, and I plan on releasing more stuff here soon. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.